Today we are here to mark uh, just another really huge, important example of our province's leadership in the fight to end HIV AIDS. And uh, for that announcement, I'd like to welcome the Honourable Premier Chris Christy Clark to tell us about the latest landmark in that battle. All right. Thank you very much. Ray. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. Um, we were just remarking before we came in that um, although British Columbia often makes history, we don't often take the time to celebrate it. And today we are celebrating a moment where we are making world history here in Vancouver, thanks to the very hard work of Dr. Julia Montaner and his team. And I'd like to acknowledge uh, Michael Sidibe, who is with us today from, from UNAIDS, and of course, Tico Kerr, one of Vancouver, Canada's finest artists. This story uh, begins, I think uh, many of you will recall, in 1979, when a man from Montreal was diagnosed retrospectively with HIV. He was the first case diagnosed in Canada. And at that time, health officials were very puzzled with what it was uh, that was attacking and targeting healthy young men. In 1985, the BC Centre for Disease Control offered the first HIV tests, and St. Paul's was one of the first hospitals in Canada to treat HIV AIDS. It's important, I think, for all of us to remember that there was a time not long ago when politicians and people uh, uh, who held the public bully pulpit would argue about whether or not those who had HIV AIDS deserved to be treated. It's important to remember that patients, when they were diagnosed here at this hospital and informed that they needed to go up to the AIDS ward, were told they were going up to 10C. The disease was so stigmatized, hospital staff used a code word rather than informing the patient in front of others that they were going up to be treated for AIDS. Things have changed, thankfully, for the better. St. Paul's has since then become the home to the BC Centre for Excellence in HIV AIDS, not just Canada's largest HIV AIDS research and treatment facility, but also recognized around the world for the work that it's done. And the results here have been incredible. Since 1995, there has been a 90% drop in AIDS cases in British Columbia. And between 1996 and 2012, British Columbia saw an 80% 80, 80 decrease in HIV-related mortality. And these achievements are thanks in part to the very successful Made in BC, Made in BC programs like Stop HIV AIDS and Treatment as Prevention. And those successes are the reason that we are here today to celebrate that Ward 10C at St. Paul's Hospital will no longer be used as a dedicated AIDS ward. Not so long ago, a, a, a diagnosis of HIV AIDS was a death sentence. And today, people with living, uh, living with HIV can come to St. Paul's to get support and treatment. And they can live long and very healthy lives. This is such a big milestone. And I can think of no better reason to close a hospital ward and to repurpose that hospital ward than a lack of demand. And so I'm joined here by Mr. Sidibe and Dr. Montaner, who will tell you about how we are breaking ground in Canada and across the world. Earlier this month, BC became the first jurisdiction in Canada to direct health providers to encourage testing for every adult. And today, Vancouver becomes the first city in the world to re the first in the world to refocus its AIDS ward. And we will continue to be a leader in the fight against HIV and AIDS by focusing on HIV support services for people suffering from hepatitis and addiction issues. We are very, very proud that here in British Columbia, we moved faster and more purposefully than any other jurisdiction in the world from hearing politicians say AIDS wasn't a disease that deserved to be treated to one that got the full support of government funding and focus supporting incredible researchers and practitioners like Julia Montaner and his group. We are very, very proud of the achievement that we are celebrating today. And thank you to everyone here on Dr. Montaner's team, 
Thank you to everybody at St. Paul's, to the BC Center of Excellence, and for your innovation, for your dedication, for your hard work. We all, I think, would like to, at the end of our careers and our lives, be able to say that we made a difference. I don't think there are very many more people in Canada who can say that they have made the difference that the men and women who are in this room today will be able to claim. Thank you very, very much. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Premier, and uh, thank you for your leadership and your support of uh, the efforts uh, here at St. Paul's. Our next speaker has come a very long way to be part of this announcement, and we are very pleased to have him back in Vancouver today. Michelle Sidibe has been a vocal supporter of the successful treatment as prevention strategy and has, in fact, called it a fundamental part of the arsenal in moving towards a generation free of HIV. His advocacy for this Made in BC approach to fighting HIV AIDS has helped bring treatment as prevention to the attention of countries around the world, and now France, Brazil, Panama, and cities in the United States and in China use this approach to reducing HIV AIDS. It has also brought well-deserved attention to the pioneering work uh, here at the BC Center for Excellence in HIV AIDS. So I'd like now to ask the Under Secretary of the United Nations and Executive Director of UN AIDS, Mr. Michelle Sidibe, to say a few words. Michelle. Thank you very much. Thank you. It is an honor and privilege for me to be here this morning in British Columbia province. I want to just to say that uh, it is a defining moment for all of us. Defining moment because uh, we have to remember, just a few years back, uh, it was uh, a gay plague. People were scared of each other. We're hiding ourselves. We're not knowing what to do. This hospital, like many others in the world, were uh, full of people living with HIV, and lying on the beds. And uh, today, I'm so happy to be here. To be here uh, to just uh, say that uh, to the world that it will be the first time in the history of uh, this uh, fight against epidemic that we will refocus our approach. We'll say that uh, we don't need anymore to have a special uh, word for uh, people uh, living with uh, HIV and uh, dying uh, because uh, they didn't have access to treatment. And the opposite, we will be able to say to the world that uh, global solidarity was uh, paying off that we have been uh, mobilizing the science. We change completely the dynamic of this epidemic. We break the trajectory of new infection. We are reducing death like uh, just uh, the premier of uh, uh, British Columbia mentioned. So it's time to start thinking about ending AIDS. And uh, this uh, journey will start again in your city. It will start uh, here in British Columbia. It's here that we'll start to say to the world that ending AIDS is not just a dream. It's possible to control this epidemic if we have a global solidarity. If we are giving treatment to people, if we are prolonging their life, if we are uh, moving from despair to hope, it's possible. It's possible to show that uh, it's not just uh, a, a dream to say to the generation will come that we made history, like uh, you said, uh, uh, Premier. I think uh, we are starting here, and I am sure we'll take uh, this uh, uh, dynamic, this journey, to all other cities in the world. And I want to take advantage uh, of this moment to say that I am inviting your uh, province uh, the, uh, uh, British, the province of British Columbia to come to join us uh, in uh, Melbourne in the global conference, uh, world global conference, uh, to just uh, uh, share your experience, to tell to the people that uh, it's, um, it's possible to end AIDS. And uh, we will have uh, a global city conference. Uh, we don't know where, probably in Paris, but I think you will be the first one to share your experience uh, in uh, Paris, in front of all other cities, that uh, this journey is not just about uh, people who are dying, it's also about uh, saving life, and we are doing that together. Today, I'm honored to welcome uh, the premier uh, of your province, uh, uh, Christy Clark, uh, uh, to join UNA's Global Leadership Citizen Circle. It's a specific circle 
small group of people who have been contributing to the fight against HIV AIDS, who have been giving their voice, their time, like your presence today, to demonstrate that it's not uh, just uh, about uh, uh, species, but it's about uh, commitment, true commitment uh, to social justice and the redistribution of opportunity for uh, poor people. And I want to congratulate you and to say how much we are happy to have you with us today. And we are here because also uh, we are trying to celebrate, but we are celebrating also not only our success, but we are also thinking about uh, people we lost. Uh, people who have not been uh, privileged to have uh, access to those services. People who are uh, certainly in other part of the world uh, waiting for uh, having <coughs> this uh, same uh, uh, benefits, uh, having the same privilege to have access to uh, treatment uh, so they can be uh, able to say one day that this journey we started here is uh, also reaching them. And I want also to announce uh, today uh, that uh, uh, we are uh, uh, I am uh, just uh, nominating uh, Julio, my friend uh, Montagne, for the great work he has been able to do to be uh, the global advisor on treatment for UN AIDS for the world. Because I personally believe that he deserved that. He has been uh, giving all his time, all his life, to be able to show that uh, when no one was believing that treatment can be a prevention where people were fighting against uh, him. I listened to him one day in the restaurant in small corner, and I left. I said, you know, I am not uh, wrong if I follow this man, because at least uh, even if uh, science uh, proves us wrong, I, I will be following his personal commitment. And that's what I did, following his personal commitment. And today, science is showing that when you put people early on treatment, you can reduce a new infection by 96%. That started again here. And that's year that we announced for the first time the three therapy. And again, today we are announcing that probably we are ending AIDS and it's possible. And uh, thank you very much for being here. And uh, thanks again for your effort. Thanks for your leadership. And I'm so proud to be with you. Well, thank you very much, uh, Michelle. That was uh, outstanding. Thank you very much. Our next speaker, Michelle, talked about. He's an outspoken and tireless advocate for those with HIV AIDS. He's been on the front lines of the battle against this disease and understands the need to take bold action whenever possible. Uh, I'd like to invite uh, our good friend, uh, Dr. Julio Montana, director of the BC Center for Excellence in HIV AIDS to the podium. Julio. Um, it's been a difficult uh, few weeks. Uh, my dad passed uh, within the last couple of weeks after a very long illness. And um, uh, it brought me uh, closer to those that cannot be here today that Michelle referred to. So if you don't mind, I'm going to ask you uh, for a moment of silence uh, to think about those that didn't make it to 1986, for those that could not <clears throat> benefit for, from the results of our research, for those that are still dying unnecessarily around the world uh, because they have no access to life-saving medications that we have pioneered here, um, and for those that show us the road, uh, our mentors, our parents, including my own. Please, join me. Thank you. Um, it is a, an indeed a tremendous pleasure to be here today. I'm not going to tell you the history of the work that we've done here collectively. I'm simply here to thank, first and foremost, uh, the Premier, Premier Clark. Uh, you've been terrific. Uh, uh, it's been such a great pleasure to work with you. Uh, your leadership, your unwavering support, uh, your willingness to go where nobody else has gone, uh, that is the reason why we're here today. You have allowed us to deliver on the promise of a thought, and a thought without your 
support uh, for us to implement it would have been nothing more than a thought. And today that has become a reality. When people have asked me, what does it mean to uh, actually uh, say that we have basically or virtually control aids, uh, I'm not a painter. Uh, I like a different kind of art. And this is the art that I like. This is the history of the HIV epidemic in British Columbia. Uh, this is how it picked. And I don't need to tell you where triple therapy became the norm, because triple therapy is exactly at the peak. And after that happened, uh, you see that uh, virtually AIDS disappeared. But it didn't really disappear until the very end, when treatment as prevention became the reality. So we did it, and everybody else can do it. And for that reason, I want to thank the minister for helping us uh, to bring this forward in such an effective way. Uh, Minister Lake Terry, you've been terrific as well. And your daughter, too, by the way. <laughs> um, I, I, I want to thank Michelle, because Michelle was the premier, the, the, the premier and, the, and, the, and the number one leader in the world that stood behind me and told me, Julio, we're going to do this together. And believe me, I was not a popular kid when I first said that I was going to do this. Uh, basically, they told me that I was crazy, uh, not just in my own backyard, but all around the world. But with Michelle's support, and I must say Stephen Lewis' support, uh, who is a good friend of both of us, uh, I felt that I had my back covered. And as such, I could actually go out and take the hits that we needed to take to make this happen. So Michelle, thank you. You've been there from the first day, and that has been terrific. Now, none of that would have been possible if it wasn't because of the terrific support that we have had here at PHC at St. Paul's Hospital from day one. It goes without saying that when everybody took three steps back, uh, St. Paul's Hospital at the time took three steps forward, uh, thanks to the Sisters of Charity. And the Sisters made a commitment for us to do the best we could to deal with this epidemic. And it was the Sisters that actually um, reminded me uh, in ways that I am not going to tell you about. <laughs> no, that once, but many times, we needed to do more about prevention. And even before we knew that we were onto something big, uh, those words resonated with us, and we continued to work to make the best we could out of treatment, uh, both in terms of preventing morbidity, mortality, and transmission. I want to, there are too many people that I had to thank, but I want to highlight Diane Doyle, our CEO, and Jeff Plant, the chairman of our board. I, I want to highlight Peter Phillips, uh, who has been my uh, partner in crime uh, now for nearly three decades. Uh, without Peter, I would have not been able to build uh, uh, the strength that we have in the, in, the, in the AIDS team and in the 10C and in the IDC and in the HIV program at St. Paul's and, of course, the BC Center. Our partners in the, in, in the province, including the BC CDC, PHSA, uh, the rest of the health authorities, particularly uh, uh, Vancouver Coastal Health Authority, which has been terrific uh, in helping us to implement the pilots together with the Northern Health Authority, and now the rest of the province which are, has rallied behind us uh, to make this happen. Uh, all I want to tell you is that on behalf of my patients, on behalf of those that need our services, uh, what we do is extremely important. Thank you for your support. Thank you to our patients that gave their life, uh, their passion, and their energy for this to happen. Thank you all. Thank you very much, uh, Julio. Uh, your passion is uh, obvious uh, every time we, we speak with you. And uh, again, thank you for your great leadership. It wasn't that long ago, uh, the mid-1990s, in fact, that an AIDS or HIV diagnosis was uh, considered a death sentence. And the stigma, uh, as the Premier mentioned, that was associated often meant discrimination for those battling this disease. Our next speaker has a very personal connection to the progress made in the fight against this disease and has, in fact, been the face of HIV AIDS here in Vancouver. I'd like to welcome artist and advocate Tico Kerr to the podium. Tico. Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is an incredible privilege for me because um, uh, I'm just one of many that have been so fortunate to have lived long enough to have the new treatments and have their life turned around. I first tested for HIV in 1985, um, and I could have been positive before that, so I've been dealing with it for about 30 years, as many of the lucky ones have. 
Um, during that time, I've had uh, the experience of the stigma, the um, fear, um, and also the plethora of multitudes of drugs causing side effects and the illnesses that um, having no immune system brings upon me. So um, it's, it's been kind of a, a rocky ride, but for some lucky reason, I ended up in this situation with Julio as my doctor and the BC Center of Excellence. And I know I wouldn't be alive if I were somewhere else in the world. Um, I was hanging on as long as I could for various drugs uh, to come and kind of save me because I was always at the cutting edge of failure. Uh, and then in 2005, um, everything stopped working for me. And uh, I started to fade really quickly. So it was imperative that we approach Health Canada for access to two drugs that were uh, not licensed in Canada, but were very uh, successful in overseas trials. Uh, we applied on compassionate grounds, but unfortunately we were uh, shut down and we were rejected. And we kept getting rejected every time. And finally, Julio and I coupled up and we decided to spearhead a very loud campaign in the media to get attention to my, myself and five other men that were also suffering from um, this kind of advanced stage of HIV. Um, happily, what happened was a groundswell of support from the community and um, we embarrassed the government enough to have the drugs relinquished to us in January of 2005, or 2006, forgive me. Um, my viral load dropped 90% in five days and uh, within a month I became undetectable. And that's where I am, and that's where the other men in my group are, and that's where everyone in this protocol is. We have, you can't find the virus when we um, do our blood work, and it's a remarkable and liberating thing to know that you can't infect anyone uh, by chance. So anyway, um, in my darkest moment, I uh, decided to create a painting, which is the first one which you see behind me. It's a picture of St. Paul's uh, room. Um, I spent a lot of time in rooms like that, and it's angry and bleak, and um, there's no kind of hope that's um, visible anywhere. And happily, that uh, situation has changed for me now. So with vigor and gratitude, I um, created another painting, which I'd like to unveil for you now. And the painting is called um, New World After AIDS. <laughs> 